everyone, it's me, Dr. Whimsy, and today we're talking about the aging process and some basic tips of things that you can do in order to slow down the aging process. And I want to address it from an anthropological perspective. What do we know about the healthiest diets and lifestyles from people throughout the world and the people who live the longest? Well, we do know that there are blue zones, and we know that there are certain parts of the world where people seem to be living longer uh, and happier than other parts of the world. For example, we know the people of Okinawa live uh, extremely long lives. Uh, the highest uh, number of centarians, I believe, uh, is in Okinawa. But we also find blue zones in Greece. We found them in Italy. Uh, we also found a blue zone in uh, an area of Pakistan that borders, I believe, China. So I was, uh, as I've mentioned before on this channel, I was an anthropology major and I studied various different cultures all over the world. And I really, one of my favorite classes when I was pre-med anthropology major was the uh, subject of environmental medicine. And I remember taking a course in environmental medicine where we talked about some of the healthiest people in the Americas. And that was the Nez Perce of the Columbia River Gorge, particularly a band of Nez Perce known as the Sahaptin that lived along the Columbia River Gorge that made contact with Lewis and Clark in the fall of, I believe, it, I think it was the winter of 1807. And one of the reasons why that population was so interesting uh, to me and also to the professor who gave the course was because the Sahaptin people lived so long. In fact, they were living twice as long as their European counterparts. And this gave, opened up a conversation about what we know about human evolution and basically where humans have lived and, and eaten and, and maintained their health. And we know from environmental anthropology studies that 90% of humans live in temperate zones. 90% of humans live in temperate zones, with only 10% of humans living in harsh zones. An example of a harsh uh, area would be parts of the frozen uh, tundras where humans once lived, or where today we see uh, Inuit populations. Uh, Greenland would be an example of a harsh uh, area. Sub-Sahara Africa. Uh, would also be an example of a, of a harsh environment. So yes, human beings can live in extremely harsh environments, but for the most part, 90% of us sought temperate zones. And we moved and followed uh, the animals uh, in, in human migration patterns uh, to temperate zones. We would simply follow the animals and we would go and find watering holes in areas where uh, plants were plentiful. So 90% seems to be the magic number here. 90% of humans evolved in temperate zones and 90% of the diet appears to have been plant-based, not 100%. We're not finding in the archeological record and we're not finding in any of the uh, traditional societies that are still around today in parts of Africa. There are uh, areas uh, in uh, South America as well where people are still living traditionally. Uh, as they once did uh, parts of Australia as well. We are still seeing the same rule of about 90% of the diet being plant-based, with the exception that if you're in a harsher environment, you may be more dependent on animal products. I'll give you two examples. One is the Inuit of uh, Greenland, or what we call Eskimos, uh, living on uh, diets that are predominantly animal-based with uh, high consumption of omega-3s, more so than we would certainly see in a European population. But again, that is an extreme environment. And we also see extreme uh, dependency on animal products in uh, parts of, uh, of Africa that are, are desert-like uh, amongst herdsmen. An example would be the Dinka, the Noir, the uh, uh, people who uh, live in uh, some remote areas of Kenya would be an example of that. Okay, so it, we're talking about 90% living in temperate zones, 90% of humans living in temperate zones, and 90% of their diet being plant-based. This seems to be the diet that human beings have evolved to eat. When we're looking at the Sahaptin people of the Columbia River Gorge, 
who were living twice as long as their European counterparts, that is a really interesting diet because the majority of the animal protein they're consuming is fish, mostly salmon, but they harvested fish seasonally based on what was available. And then a large percentage of the food they were eating were, was uh, nuts, seeds, wild berries and roots. They harvested uh, quite a bit of lomachum, which is a type of wild celery, and wild camas, which is a type of wild onion. Uh, both of those, by the way, also are great in terms of building the, uh, supporting the immune system. Uh, the onions, which contain quercetin, and uh, they, uh, they're also, uh, they are, there's also uh, some anti-inflammatory properties to onions. And uh, the lomachum, which uh, are thought to be immunomodulators and to be helpful as antiviral. So it was very interesting that that was the diet we saw in that population, which had longevity. And in fact, longevity studies show that the people who are living longest uh, eat a diet that is 90% plant-based, going back to that 90% rule, and eating uh, foods that are in season, fresh in season. I know frozen vegetables uh, definitely uh, is a great option if you, uh, you want a nutrient dense solution and you are not buying the uh, fresh vegetables. But if we're looking at traditional societies, they're eating foods that are in season, fresh and in season. Uh, so that would be the roots in the winter time. We eat our roots in the winter time and we eat our green leaves, the green leafies and the fruits in the summertime. Uh, so 90% plant-based, fresh, in season. It was a diverse diet. This is what we also see from these uh, traditional cultures that th they pretty much were diverse in terms of what they were willing to eat and, and what they are uh, uh, still eating today. Uh, and it was whatever was available in what, whatever the season was. There was some storage. Human beings have been storing food for approximately 25,000 years, storing for the winter but by and large, uh, depending heavily on the seasons. The food was minimally processed. I've already talked about that. And last, uh, smaller portions. We tend to eat really large portions in the United States, and that is actually associated with aging. The reason it's associated with aging is that the more calories we consume, the more oxidative stress we produce. The more oxidative stress, the more damage to our cells. So we wanna be mindful of smaller portions. And the food being uh, mostly plant-based, fresh and in season, meant that they consumed much higher amounts of antioxidants. Much time was uh, taken up in uh, harvesting food, preparing food, gathering food. So we're talking about a time in human history when humans were extremely active. We've become less active today. So what do we take away from this conversation in terms of longevity studies? Eat a mostly plant-based diet, about 90% ought to do the trick. Uh, eat foods uh, in season, eat smaller portions, and become uh, physically active. Try and stay active uh, as long as you can. So those are the four things I'm gonna leave you with today in terms of how to stay healthy and slow down the aging process. I hope you enjoyed listening to this uh, video from me, Dr. Whimsy. If you'd like to find out more about my work. I'll link it below. As I said before, I'm a licensed naturopathic physician and I'm also an anthropologist. So I love doing videos that can kind of bring together those two subjects uh, and uh, hopefully help us uh, stay healthy and maintain our health uh, well past the years of 40, 50, 60 and beyond. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.